everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be reviewing two new products that just launched on the Hourglass website. I picked both of them up. I have them both here with me and I'm excited to share my thoughts with you guys. So we're gonna be first talking about this new powder from Hourglass. It is the Ambient Lighting Infinity Powder. This retails for $50 and in the video, I'm gonna demo it for you, you know, apply it on camera so you guys can see what it looks like. I will also take you outside and you know, show you guys what it looks like in the natural daylight. And then I will also show you guys what it looks like next to some of the other ambient powders that I have. I'm gonna give you guys the full rundown on this new powder. And then I'm also going to be demoing and kind of doing a wear test on the new Hourglass Unlocked Mascara. I just got this. This is the second day I've wore it and I was wearing it on Instagram and kind of doing a check-in. I think that day I wore it for like five or six hours and you know, took some kind of before and afters with it on and stuff like that. But today I didn't want to put any eyeshadow on because a lot of the times when I'm reviewing a new mascara, I like to do it without eyeshadow if I can, only because sometimes it's easier to see some of the flakes when you don't have any eyeshadow kind of, you know, giving it some give. So we're going to be testing out both of these new products. I'm going to be giving you guys the full rundown on this new powder. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the demo of me applying both of these products. I will do some check-ins and I will get into my final thoughts. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the application. Okay, so my package has arrived from Hourglass. I am ready to pull this out and see what the deal is with this. It was really weird though. Are my brows even? Not really. Oh well. It was really weird though because there was really no talking about this. Like I didn't hear much about it. Hourglass didn't. I don't know. It's like they didn't really advertise it. All of a sudden it was just on the website. Like no hype behind it. No Instagram posts. Weird. They were pushing the uh, mascara, which I have somewhere. My, my desk is a freaking mess, you guys. They were talking a lot about it, the mascara, but I really didn't hear much about this powder. So I have it here. We're going to try it. I have several hourglass powders. So later on, I will do some like swatches. You guys can see some of the comparisons of this one. It looks much darker in the images. Um, I think I had this conversation with one of my followers on Instagram, but she thought that it looked very similar to the uh, Radiant Bronze Light, which I thought that way too. Like in the image, it looks so much darker than it does in real life. Let me show you guys what these look like. This is the Radiant Bronze Light. This is the new powder. So as you can see, the bronzer is much darker. I mean, there's some marbling in this one right here, but it's not near as dark as the bronzer. By the way, Radiant Bronze Light is one of my favorite bronzers. When I want a little bit of that shimmer, oh, mm, mm, it's so pretty. So I went ahead and wiped my brush off. This is the brush, uh, this is the Sonia G Master Face Brush. This is the brush that I normally use to apply my Hourglass Translucent Setting Powder. I'm a huge fan of the Hourglass powders. They're just amazing. So this one I am very curious about. Now I did put a little bit of my Hourglass Setting Powder over top. I like to do that just to kind of buff everything together. So I'm thinking about just putting this powder on one side of the face and not on the other just so that we could kind of see the difference between the two. I'm gonna kind of dip my brush in and just start kind of doing this with it. So right away, it gave me some of that shimmery look. I don't know if it was the brush I used, but I'm not sure, but you can see. So I didn't put any highlighter on. I didn't want highlighter to take away from the powder, so I haven't applied any highlighter. All I basically put on was my foundation, my concealer. Uh, I put on a little bit of the Tom Ford contour, the shade uh, and illuminate contour. I put on the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer and uh, the new Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Lip and Cheek Clothes. I'm still kind of playing around with these. I just reviewed these yesterday, so I'm kind of still playing around with them. So I put this on, 
and then I put a little bit of the hourglass setting powder over top. That's all I have on my face, uh, just for reference. So it does give you that like shine. Can you see that? Like you can actually kind of see right here, it's more shiny than it is like right here. I'm not sure how I feel about it. And the reason why I say that is because I don't really think I like this over the pores and the wrinkles. It doesn't really have a lot of color, but it's got some highlight to it. So right here, I'm gonna dim down my light here, hold on. Right here is the swatch. So let me go over it right here one more time. It does have some shimmer to it. Can you see that? So you gotta be careful where you're gonna put shimmery products. It emphasized my texture and my wrinkles and my pores instantly. So you can kind of see that it really emphasized this like that pores area, that orange peel area that I don't like more so than on this side. This side doesn't have any of it on it. I don't know that I would go all over the face with this. Um, you can kind of see that it kind of made me shimmery right here. And obviously this, I didn't get too close to my brows. So when I went in with this brush, the product went right there in that area and I didn't go around where my brows are. So you can see right directly in that area where I put it and then right here I didn't. You can see the difference between the shimmer and the knot. So it definitely has a shimmery property to it. it. Like looking straight directly into the mirror, I feel like this side is a little bit emphasized, a little bit shiny. It might look better on camera, but in real life, I don't love this. I have to be very careful where I put shimmer at 41 years old. I can't put shimmer all over my face. I see like people like Jaclyn Hill and you know, a lot of these larger influencers who just have beautiful, beautiful, beautiful skin and their cheeks can just be glowing from the moon and it looks amazing. But on me, I'm age, I'm 41. And so age is starting to take an effect. I've got texture, I've got wrinkles. I'm starting to get more of that, um, you know, orange pill look right here. So when you go in your, when you go on your face with something like that, it's gonna emphasize every single part of that. So had I to do it over, I was thinking this was, I knew it was gonna be shimmery. I just wasn't expecting it to be that shimmery. I mean, you can see how shimmery that product is. I just wouldn't wanna put this over texture. And it might depend on what brush you use too. This one right here is the diffuse light. Love using this brush for diffuse light. I just kind of swirl my brush in there and just kind of buff it. So this is the side with the luminous powder. You can see where it's sitting, right? I don't have any highlighter on. You can see where it's sitting. Let's try this. Okay, so I'm gonna just take this fan brush and I'm gonna go into this powder and put it right there on the... It's almost gray on my skin. So because it's such a light, it's for light to medium skin tones, and because of that, it's almost too light for my skin because it's turning gray. You can kind of see where it's turning gray. If you're my shade or darker, ugh, this might be too much because it's almost turning my skin a little gray on this side. Let's move on to the mascara. I am gonna put some of the eyeliner on right up on my upper waterline. Now, I like to do this because it makes my eyelashes look a little bit thicker, a little bit fuller. I got the mascara here, and this is the second time I'm gonna use it. Uh, when I got it in the mail, I hurried and popped it on. Using film forming technology, it coats each lash in a lightweight fibers that lock in place for high impact fanned out finish and smudge proof wear. This is the brush. And I will show you the difference between this brush and the Caution Mascara brush. So this is a difference in the wands of the top one right here is the Caution and then this is the new one. So the new one is definitely a much smaller, more defined brush.
so that is coat number one and it definitely fans them out and lengthens them i wouldn't So it seems like coat number one kind of goes in and gives you the length. And then coat number two seems like it kind of thickens them a little bit. But I do recommend kind of letting the first coat kind of sit and dry for a minute before going in with the second coat. Okay, so that was kind of an easy makeup day, right? Okay, so it is currently 10 o'clock in the morning. So I'm gonna go ahead and go about my day and I'm gonna take the camera outside so you guys can see what this looks like outside. You can clearly see that this side is much more shinier than this side. I'm not even gonna put highlighter on this side because I want you guys to really see what the difference is between these. And I feel like if I put highlighter on, no matter where I put the highlighter, I feel like it will uh, kind of disrupt what we're trying to see here. The thing I will say right off the bat is that my skin looks really gray right here. And the reason for that is the powder is not dark enough for my skin tone. And so what's happened is that anytime you have anything that's dark, like for my, for example, my bronzer, like it made my bronzer and my blush look gray. Um, I mean, you can see a clear difference between the color on this side compared to this side. It made everything look really gray. I would say if you're my shade, I wouldn't buy this. Uh, I, I would say it's probably for light to maybe like a light medium skin tone based on what I'm seeing. Um, if you're, a, if you're a lighter medium, like I'm more on the medium tan, so if you're a lighter medium, you might be okay. Uh, but if you're like medium or medium to tan, I think it'd be too dark because it's just really turned everything gray on this side and I don't like the way that looks. Like this side just looks so much more fresh and awake and you know, and then this side is just kind of like dull and gray and weird. So especially where I went in with the direct, oh, it looks, Okay, so I wanted to jump on camera and do some comparisons so you guys could see the swatches on the back of my hand. So let's just do that. Normally I like to take pictures, but with these, these are going to be really, really hard to see. And I just figured it might be easier. So this is the new one. Then I'm going to take diffused light. Okay, this one right here. And we're gonna put that one right below it. The new one and diffused light. Next, we're gonna go to luminous light. Okay, so this is luminous light. So this powder right here, right here, okay? It looks like this. This one is really pretty as like a soft highlight. Um, and it does seem like this one might be a mixture between the diffused and the luminous light. Uh, but man, it's just really gray on my skin tone. I also have the Ambient Lighting Palette, which has been one of my absolute favorite palettes. I love, 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 love this palette. So I'm going to swatch all three of these shades right below it. So these three shades right here are from the Ambient Lighting Palette. Now, normally when I use the Ambient Lighting Palette, I mix all of these shades together and apply. However, I do not apply it on my cheeks like in this area. I don't like to do that because it will emphasize if I put it on the area. I have one more. I think I'm gonna put that one above it. This one right here is the one that I just added. This one is the Brilliant Strobe Light. It looks like this. So this one is more of a highlighter type and it's kind of like a vanilla creamy color. Come on camera, focus on my arm. There we go. So that one is the Brilliant Strobe Light. This is the new Lighting Infinity Powder, okay? This is Diffused Light. This is Luminous Light. And then these three right here are from the Ambient Lighting Palette just so that you guys can see what those look like. But this one doesn't look like much. Um, I would say out of all the powders, you know, it doesn't look as luminous. But on me and my skin tone, it definitely grabbed. Let's go ahead and take you guys outside and we're going to see what these look like in natural daylight. So I will see you guys in a sec. 
Okay, so I decided to pop out here. I've had this on for about two hours now, and I wanted to pop out here and show you guys what this looks like before I go in and eat some lunch and, you know, get stuff all over my face. Um, but in natural daylight, it doesn't look too bad. Obviously, I'm sitting in the shade. I didn't really, it's really hard to film in natural daylight. It just is, but I wanted to, you know, do some close-ups so you guys could see what this looks like. So this is the side that doesn't have any of the hourglass powder on it, the setting powder, but not this new luminous powder. This is the side with the luminous powder. So let's zoom you guys in. Okay, we're coming in. Oh, I got a wasp, help me. Okay, so as you can see, this cheek has, you know, I've got my bronzer and my blush on, maybe a little bit too much blush, but whatever. On this side, it's kind of gray, and that's because it just truly doesn't match my skin tone. At the end of the day, the powder is just too light for me, and sometimes when you have a powder that's too light, it will turn you gray. So it's emphasized, you know, my texture along here, and I don't like the color that it turned my bronzer and my blush. I think, if they bring out a darker shade, I might have a different experience. I did put it in that direct area with that fan brush and I felt like it was just so gray. I do not like it as a direct highlight on my skin tone. But this is what it's looking like, kind of like right here in this area. I think that was a big mistake to apply it right here, especially if you have enlarged pores or you have those like orange peel type look because this side looks much more smooth uh, than this side does. So I think overall, I am not loving this powder. I think it's just definitely not the right color for my skin tone. And I also think that Using it to buff all over the face. I think you have to have a really good uh, Skin to do that. I, I think you got to have young skin to be able to do that. I would probably recommend this powder for Maybe a light highlighter, you know if there's those of you out there who have like a light light medium skin And you don't like a, a lot of highlighter or maybe you just don't like those strong highlighters This might be a nice option as long as it looks good over your skin tone um, But if you're my skin or like medium tan darker This is gonna be way too light. It's gonna turn you gray just like it did me. I mean you can tell it is way gray I mean, this side just looks kind of plump and, you know, juicy. And then this side is just like gray. I, I'm not living for it. So anyways, I'm going to go and jump off here and go eat lunch because I am absolutely starving. And I'm going to wear these all day. The mascara is still looking pretty good. I got a little bit of flaking going on right here, but nothing too major. Uh, so I'm going to jump off of here. I will come back later on this evening and give you guys my full thoughts. But for now, I'm not living for this powder. So I will see you guys in my next check-in. So it is currently 10 o'clock at night. So I have officially, I think, had this on for what? Well, I think it's been 12 hours. I think I've said it throughout the entire video. I've pretty much edited most of my footage except for this, like, final thoughts. And I've pretty much said it throughout the entire video. I think this is designed for light to light medium. Maybe if they release more shades in this, I will enjoy this. It is a powder, like I've said, you have to be really tricky with it. You know, making sure that you're not putting it in an area where it's gonna emphasize. And I don't think that pale skin or uh, fair skin, I don't think this is gonna work for you. I think it might be too dark for you. But I think if you're light to light medium, in that, you know, if you're in the medium category and you're on the lighter end of the medium, I think it might really be beautiful on you. Uh, medium to darker, I just, I, I would wait until they release more shades if they release more shades. I mean, let's be clear, we're talking about Hourglass here. They're rarely inclusive when it comes to these powders, so who knows if they're going to release more shades. Um, I think it's all gonna boil down to that, what shade you are and what you like. I think that this was really pretty as a highlighter, but because the shade is so gray, I just hated the way it looked on my skin. Like, it doesn't look that bad on camera. It really doesn't. And my husband come home and he was like, have you been testing makeup? And I said, why? And he goes, you got this like, did you put something gray on your face right here? I rest my case. My husband never comments, but he was like, your face is gray. I'm like, I know, I know. If 
the shade was right, I might have liked this more. Uh, but because the shade was terrible, it just made everything else bad. It was like a dominoes effect. Because the shade was bad, I didn't like the way it looked. And so then I'm like, okay, it emphasizes. I don't like the way it looks on my pores. I don't like the way it looks on the, you know, and it just was kind of like a domino effect where it just looked bad. So the mascara doesn't look too bad, I don't think. I mean, I've got a little bit of fallout and flaking going on along here. Um, but not really on this side as much. More like around here. It has been 12 hours. I think it looks pretty decent for 12 hours. I had the same experience when I put it on Instagram the other day. So up here on the screen are, are the images that I took uh, for Instagram. The first picture shows with two coats on. And then I think I only had it on that day for like five or six hours. So this next image is what it looked like, uh, you know, five or six hours later. And I did have a little bit of flakage going on around, you know, the bottom underline. And I wasn't wearing any makeup that day. I was just kind of home editing, doing things. I, I didn't film that day, so I had no makeup on. And I got the mascara in the mail, so I hurried and popped some on because I wanted to see what it would look like. And you can see that I did get more flaking that day. However, I didn't have any concealer on. I didn't have any powder on. Like, I only had, like, you know, skincare on. So my skin was a little bit glossy, you know what I mean? You know how that is when you put skincare on. Uh, so the flakes were kind of sticking to it more so than it would if I had, you know, concealer or something. So I think if you're in the market for a new mascara and you like that spider leg fanned out look, you might really like this one because this one does have the fanned look. Um, up here on the screen are some images of the models that they have on the Hourglass website. You can see that their lashes are very fanned. They're not full. They're not thick but they're separated and they've got that fanned look. So depending on what you like, we all like different things and sometimes our lashes only will do one way, one thing and it's really frustrating. So depending on what you like, you know, those are the results, but I do think it's a good mascara. I will be trying the new Pat McGrath mascara. I'm actually waiting for it to launch on the Sephora website because every single time I order from Pat McGrath, it takes too dang long. So I'm gonna order it from Sephora tonight and there you go. I hope that this review was helpful for you guys for these two new products from Hourglass. If you got this new powder, sound off down below. What are What is your skin tone? And let us know how you're liking them. I am very curious to hear more people talk more about this powder. I haven't watched any reviews on it. I haven't heard anybody really talk much about it. So, you know, I'm always curious to hear how everybody else is feeling about products like these. It's definitely glowy. It's definitely got a little shimmer to it. And it's definitely only suited for a certain type of skin tone. And medium, tan, and darker, don't touch this with a 10-foot pole. And if you're pale or fair, I think it might be too dark. So that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in today's video. I hope that you all have a wonderful day. And I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you. Bye.